All right, let's uh, let's talk about SI for just a moment. This is Thursday, so there's going to be an SI session tonight online, and the SI HQ page inside web courses has got all the specs that you need to get in there. Also, uh, when Shai is done, she will uh, she will uh, make the recording available and get the link to me and then I'll put that link in the SI HQ page and you'll be able to look at it in case you don't actually have time to go to the online SI tonight. But if you can go, it's a, it's a good uh, process. I use it for office hours with my online physical science section, and it works pretty good. Okay, uh, we were doing uh, stopping time problems last uh, meeting on Tuesday. Uh, let's continue. Uh, but before we do that, I want to go over a couple things in web courses with you. There's some percentages in there that I really, really hate. Uh, they're in this gray rectangle at the bottom of the grades page. This is what they look like. They are irrelevant to us. Because web courses uh, generate them automatically. You know, these things over here. And, but I didn't program those in, so Web Courses uh, knows nothing about our grading scheme. You know the scheme that's in our uh, syllabus, you know, drop two, uh, or drop the, the lowest, keep the best two of midterms, and all that stuff. 85% you know, uh, performance factor for class participation. All that stuff, they don't know anything about that, all right? But they pretend to. If I put stuff in the grade book, uh, they, they canvas uh, purports to say, oh, yeah, I know what to do with that. And then they put these percentages in, you know, kind of like this one up here. And then students think, oh, my God, I'm, you know, I just lost 50% of my grade. Don't pay any attention to that stuff up there. All right? Pay attention to the numbers. The scores in web courses, you know, like whatever you get for L7 answers, whatever you get for L7 correct, and so on and so forth. We got a bunch of lectures to update, but, you know, all that data is in there. Pay attention to that, but not the percentages. And if you can do that, uh, you'll successfully avoid a lot of stress and mental anguish. Uh, and... I will avoid a lot of stress and mental anguish caused by students stressing me out because of those spurious percentages. Second thing I want to go over with you is discussion postings. When you uh, set up a new discussion post, I want you to always set it so that the replies are threaded uh, and so that uh, liking is enabled. Now that's over here right below uh, the actual text that you type in. All right. And so if you can do that, it'll just make the discussions a little bit uh, more conducive to study. And just so you know, uh, we've been we had a nice office hour session yesterday. A study group came in. They met uh, before my office hours. Then they came to office hours. They met in the library. What room were you guys in? We were just in the meeting hallway on the first floor. Okay, so they're in the they're up there on the first floor. They they met. They worked on stuff. Then they trooped over to office hours in the physical sciences building, and uh, and we had a great session. And we're going to continue to have great sessions over there in physical science during my office hours. And um, But it started in discussions. They are, uh, Melanie, where are you at? Okay, Melanie 
um, is the one that uh, organized it in discussions. So look at discussions uh, or start your own study group and orient it to office hours with me or Darian uh, or Caroline. Now, here's the specs for Darian Fry's office hours. And uh, you go to the same building, but uh, she's not allowed to use PS158 because it's already been scheduled for the time that she wants. So she'll be just out in those cafe tables in the atrium. There's a whole bunch of them. And she'll help you out. Now, Caroline is thinking about Monday. But we haven't finalized that yet. And she'll be in the atrium of the physical science. So, And it's probably going to be later in the day on Monday. All right? So if you can't make it to Wednesday morning with me, if you can't make it to Friday at noon with Darien, maybe you can make it to later in the day on Monday with Caroline. And a little bit of that and maybe a little bit of SI and put those together and all of a sudden you're starting to crush my exams. All right, And that's what you want to do. All right, So those guys uh, know how to do it. All right. Questions about any of this stuff, grades, office hours, and so forth. Okay, let's continue. Uh, last time we were talking about momentum and impulse. This is the impulse equation. Uh, F delta T equals delta P. The little arrows over the top signify that directions are important. All right. And for us, the directions uh, will be expressed as pluses and minuses to signify um, pluses to the right and minuses to the left, or pluses vertically upward and minuses vertically downward. Uh, either of those are fine. Um, and I mentioned last time, and let me reinforce it now, this is another version of F equals MA, the second law, this particular equation. Now it has a fancy name, impulse equation, but it's basically another version of good old second law F equals MA. And if you want to befuddle an engineering major, uh, just write this down and tell them, yeah, we were talking about F equals MA today, but don't write F equals MA, write this down. And they'll think, whoa, how did they learn about that? All right. Don't explain yourself. Just write it down, casual as you please, and uh, get a little bit of enjoyment at the expense of those know-it-all engineering majors. All right, what we're going to do is reinforce the stopping time task and, try and, and use the impulse equation, the impulse formula. And what we're going to do, Anne, is we're going to just go step by step through it and make sure everybody's um, operating at full capacity, mentally. Now you may not have thought you'd get up to your full mental capacity today, but we're going to try it. And what we're going to do is compute the impulse on a basketball and free fall. So, so this one, we're, we're going vertical. And we're actually going to talk about two dimensions, but all the motion is just going to be up and down. Now, if you're in a basketball game, F equals MA applies when you shoot the basket, and then you're going in two dimensions, three dimensions, really. Um, but for us, we're just going to talk about a basketball and free fall. Um, and so the y-axis for us is going to be our pluses and our minuses. All right. And what I want to do is take a quarter second 
0 0.25 seconds as our uh, increment of time in free fall. And we're going to try to analyze the or use the impulse equation uh, in this very idealized and simplified uh, system, a free fall system um, that's easy to visualize and easy to uh, compute. Uh, but before we do that, uh, let's get down a few specs about the basketball and so forth. So get out your clicker and have it ready because we're about to do a clicker question about an NBA basketball. Here it is. Uh, what is the weight force of an NBA basketball? Uh, and for those of you that are clicking, we are on frequency BB. So if you're getting a no signal or if you're not getting the go nitro message, hold the power button down until the square flashes, then hit B twice and you'll be in. All right. Now you should be able to get a go nitro and start to vote. That G thing? Is that the, that's the casual way that you refer to the acceleration of gravity at the surface of the earth? Carl, I don't know about these guys up here. They're in the front row, but it's like they're in the ozone layer or something. I don't, I mean, I'm trying. I'm, I'm working hard with these guys, but I don't know. Sometimes. Thirty seconds. And hey, you guys, I told you that we'd be doing certain things all semester and wait for us. Yep. We're going to be talking about wait for us until the end of April from time to time, including today. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Wow, we only have 161 answers. Um, that means about 60 people are apps. Uh oh, we got some trouble here. Um, Here's the distribution of answers. The correct answer is C, 6.076. And but a bunch of you voted for A, and a few of you voted for B and D. By the way, last last class I gave you a very fast question whether you wanted to dismiss early or not. A for yes, B for no. Some people voted for no. Okay. But who voted for C? <laughs> there wasn't even a C on there. It was all... Anyway, I tell you, you guys. Anyways, I didn't count that. I was just kind of messing around. Um, but we did have two regular questions last time. Let's talk about this one. We, we do have a distribution of answers... Um, I want you to jot these down carefully in your notes. And we're going to do some thinking. And we're going to use our clickers to express our thoughts. All right. About this particular question. And so jot down option A, B, C, and D. And circle C, if you haven't already done so. 6.076, and make a note of the NBA basketball, 0 0.62 kilograms, and our next question uh, is going to be 
a uh, an alphanumeric question, and I'm going to ask you this following IQ question. Why or how can you eliminate the other three options? And so right now what I want you to do is talk it over with your neighbors, um, whoever's sitting with you. If, if somebody is sitting next to you that you don't know who they are, make friends, talk it over. Why is it that you can eliminate A, B, and D from this set? Go ahead and do that for a minute. Other than saying they're not right. Darian, how am I doing for projection? All right. See, I'm a lot lower. I'm, I'm waved down in the register. Did you notice it? My voice? Maybe I shouldn't be doing that, but... Well, I'm not, I'm not hitting my higher notes. I'm talking down in my midsection and lower. I'm not... I'm not going, what? Because I can't, I can't project that as well as the lower. Not yet, anyways. My voice is so out of shape. I mean, I used to, when I was in choir, when I was a cantor at church, I used to sing, I could sing a bunch of the soprano, if necessary, and a bunch of the bass. You know, I couldn't go all the way to the bottom of the bass. I could go all the way up there for the soprano, but oh, quite a bit. I can't, I, but I can go up and get a lot of it. Because the soprano is just the melody most of the time. Unless you have a serious four-part harmony. And then, huh? But I can do it. I can do it. I could do so, but you know, like when when they have a descant, you know, a serious up there in the stratosphere. No, I can't do that, you know. But but uh, a lot of times, yeah, I can go up and. All right, now you've been friends, Romans, countrymen. Lend me your ears. You've been talking about this for a minute. Let's get down a business. Hit the refresh key on your clicker and then use this code table to form an answer. Send in your answer. All right. So form a set of letters and use the up and the down arrow key. All right. To select A or, you know, like T BOP. T-B-O-P, that means velocity is always smaller. Now, that's not a real answer. But your answer, see if you can put it together with this set of codes. Letter A through letter Z. And I don't think I have any Chuck Norris stuff in there. So, seriously, uh, write down an answer and see if you can put it together. And then beam it in. And once you've typed in your code, whether it's four letters, you, I think you can go up to 14. Hit the send key. And once you've done that, but you won't get the letters unless you hit the refresh key. So hit your refresh and then send in some letters. What? Uh, the, a students, a, a student in the in the right side of the room said, "Is this objective or is is there an exact correct answer?" Is there an exact correct answer? 
Yeah, and matter of fact, there's a bunch of correct answers. And that's what I like about this kind of a code question. As many students as there are in here, 160 or something like that, there can be 160 correct answers, all of them different. So you are, you are expressing your creativity and your thought. This is way different than multiple choice. And I see some of you type it in some letters. Good. Don't just type in A, B, C, D, E. That's not an answer. Okay, good. You're, you're looking good. We've got 90 answers, 93, 96. Uh, and we'll look at some of these answers and see if they make sense. I'll give you one minute. 60 seconds. Thirty seconds. Did you get it? Let's see. Fifteen seconds. Hurry up. Five, four, three. Two, one, zero. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh, okay, let's see here. Uh, okay. Um, Let's let's go down in the middle of things and let's look at boy, you know this is interesting. There's a huge amount of different answers here. Take a look at this. Uh C B U W. Let's look at that one. C B U W. Okay, correct option is mass times, ooh, that one's incomplete. You know, if I, and hey, you guys, if I was giving you a question like this on a test, uh, and I saw an answer like that, I might give it partial credit, because they're trying to say something about mass times 
G, I guess. Uh, let's go a little further. Don't laugh. I'm not making fun. I, I love these questions because they show me what you guys are thinking. All right, let's take a look at this one. Uh, G, B, O, Q, U. Uh, three people typed that in. And let's see what that is. Uh, weight is always larger mass. Actually, that is, that's not in, you're not in the right ballpark, but you are in, but you are in the right neighborhood. You're a couple blocks away from from the ballpark. Let's take a look. Let's look at one more. Let me go all the way down as far as I can. All right, let's look at this one. U D A B P. U D A B P. Uh, mass of other options is smaller. Mass of other options is smaller. Don't laugh. That is lovely. That is a great answer. If, if, you, if you're one of the... If you're the... There's only one person that voted for that. If that was you, put a star in your notes because you've got to... That is a lovely answer. And here's why. If you think, and, and you can write down my comments now, we're not going to look at any more of those answers, although I will look at all of them carefully over the weekend. Here's, here's how you want to think about that whole problem. The mass of the basketball is 0 0.62. Gravity is 9.8 G. Now that's almost 10. So your weight force is always going to be about 10 times as big as your mass in the metric system. And of the numbers that you have, there's only one that's near 6, and that was option C. The other ones were way smaller. But what I did, and that's how I explain it, but the student that we just looked at uh, their answer, the very last answer, they were saying, um, yeah, those are weights, but for smaller masses, not a basketball. And that's a good way to look at it, too. All right, now what I'm going to do is look at all your guys' questions. I'll, I'll decode them, form a sentence, and then I'm going to read your sentences. And, and you'll have correct or incorrect based on that. Uh, but we, we looked at a few of them. So now let's hey, go ahead and hit your refresh key. Because now you're going to do a calculation. So get your calculator out. And this is actually kind of a mini review. Because now I'm asking you a drop distance. So let me start this question. All right, numeric. Type in your number to the nearest centimeter, i.e., the nearest 0 0.01 meter of drop distance. I hear people rustling around in their notebook looking for the drop distance formula. Good.
One minute. And don't forget to hit the send key. And hey, you guys, if you're t trying to type in uh, a decimal fraction, make sure you, in other words, zero point something, you have to type the zero. Don't try to type in point something something. Type in zero point something something. Otherwise, you don't get the decimal. The decimal can't be the first character. What's that? Really? Okay, that's very good. That must be new with the software. That's good. Because it used to be you couldn't get the decimal point without typing the zero yourself. Crock pot for lunch. Leftover crock pot for lunch. So. so I'm not jealous of you eating Cheetos back there. What's that? Mini muffins. Oh, -ho. you know, Shy was famous for bringing Cheetos to class when she was a student, and in the right in the front row, right in front of me. Like where she's sitting right now. And I would always, she, and she would try to not do it without any noise. But it never worked. I could always hear it. And I would, I'd be talking about this or that. And all of a sudden, 10 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one, zero. Um, oh, oh, we got some splaining to do here. Oh, no, we're pretty good. Here's correct answer is point three one. Most of you got that. There's the shh. Sh 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 most of you did get that. A few of you, uh, looks like you typed in, you didn't round off the way you're supposed to. You have point three, 0 0.30625, 0 0.306, 0 0.3. Look at that. Uh, see that? 0 0.3 here, wrong round off. 0 0.306, wrong round off. 0 0.30625, wrong round off. Now, I'm not going to count those wrong. I'll be giving you those points. Uh, but you got to be careful about rounding off when I tell you to. Question. Yeah, but then I gave you this example right here. All right. That one... That's what you should go by. All right? So I'll always try to tell you that. All right, hit your refresh key again. We got more questions coming, my wonderful students. How far does it fall in... 0 0.500 seconds. This one's multiple choice. Yeah, same equation, but the same, only different.
30 seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ah, uh, yeah, geniuses. And he, here's a, here's an easy way to double check that. Double the time. Distance. Multiply by four. Which is pretty close to what you got here. That's four times the drop distance of a quarter second. So that's looking good. Uh, let me... And here's what it would look like to scale. You know, if for a real basketball... This picture is to scale. Um, so you could jot that down if you want. That's how far it would fall uh, proportional to this display size in half a second. And then in a quarter of a second, it'd be way up here. Okay, so one fourth of the current distance all the way down here at the bottom. Now we're going to compute impulse on the basketball in free fall. All right. And we're going to go back to our time increment, 0 0.25 seconds. And here are the specs. Mass 0 0.62. See how you have to be able to work out some of the specs in order to get the impulse equation and really use it? Here we go. Uh, weight force, 6.08. We know the drop distance. Um, how much impulse do you get? in 0 0.25 seconds. <laughs> Figure it out again. What? No, no, no. No, no, no. Maybe after the problem. Maybe. Huh? The weight force. Yeah, but you calculated that about 10 minutes ago, right? Remember? That was the very first thing we calculated. Yeah, the wait for us, wasn't it? And then I ask you, why, why is that? Why can you eliminate the other ones? And we figured out it's t it's approximately ten times the mass, et cetera, et cetera. Fifteen seconds. Whoa, you guys better hustle. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All right, let's see what you guys got. Very good. All right, so here, here's the 
here's the scoop. Let's do a little recap. And just jot this down in case I tripped you up on something. Here we go. Delta P equals F delta T. Now we know what the force is, or hopefully you remember, 6.08 newtons, approximately. And notice that I've got it written as 6.08 kilogram meter per second squared. Now the reason that I do that is so that I can do some cancellation. This stuff here is a newton. So go ahead and jot that down. It's perfectly fine to write that. And if that were your final, if I were asking you for a force and you gave me that for your answer, it would be, I would count it correct. Question. Here. It, because it's in elapsed time. You're going from zero, t equals zero, to t equals 0 0.25 seconds. All right. Time can be negative if you're going backwards in time, but for this one, we're going forwards in time. So it's T2 minus T0, T, T2 minus T1. T2 is 0 0.25. T1 is 0. And, hey, you guys, notice that I don't have any minus signs here to indicate downward, but I could easily put them in there if I want. Right now, here I've canceled seconds from the drop time. And one of the powers of seconds from the denominator. And what that leaves me with is plain old kilogram meters per second uh, for my answer. All right. And then, so there's the units for my answer, and then the actual multiplication is 1.52. And here's just a side note for you about that. All right, now there's a zillion different ways to use the impulse equation, and we've trotted our way through step by step for a bunch of them. You're gonna see it again. And my wonderful students, if you're trying to figure out a stopping time, which is one of the classic problems that you must know how to do for the midterm and for the final, then you, the most uh, graceful way of handling that question is with the impulse formula. I want to talk about some more things um, about that free fall trajectory. And so I want to remind you about how strobes work. You know, this is a strobe photo of a, a bird taking off uh, from the hands of this guy down in the lower left. And the strobe flash flashes like every tenth of a second. And then you get the image on your film, and your one frame of film appears to have several different moments of time photographed on it. And here's another one. Here's a drip of water dropping out of a faucet. A little bit shorter time scale. And I like this one because you can see the shadow in the back. So you know it's not fake. That would be very difficult to fake. And we got a little drip here, a little sub-drip over here, uh, kind of halfway down. Right now, the reason I'm bringing up strobes is I want to think stroboscopically about the basketball on its vertical path. So go ahead and make another sketch of the vertical path. And just for bookkeeping purposes, let's put t equals 0 at the top, t equals 0 0.25 seconds at downward a little bit, and then t equals 0 0.50 seconds, a little bit further down. And make them the two distance intervals 
about ratio four to one as well as you can. All right. Now, if you take a vertical free fall and you divide it up into equal increments of time, one of the interesting things that ha which is what we've got here, um, you get equal increments of delta p. You get equal increments of impulse for every quarter of a second you get another 1.52 kilogram meters per second of impulse we just figured that out and I want to refer to that impulse that delta P uh, with a subscript for the for the vertical axis the y-axis uh, so let's call that delta P subscript y all right, and every 0.25 seconds, you get another 1.52 kilogram meter per second of impulse. And why is that? Because the weight force is the same. And if delta T is the same, 0 0.25, if delta T is the same, so every 0.25 of a second, you get another equal increment of impulse but you do not get equal increments of delta y and that's why we figured out those drop distances i mean it's a it's a good drop distance it's just not equal so so the distance increment here between these first two times is 0.31 meters 0 0.31 meters but between t equals 0 and t equals 0 0.5 or actually I should say between t equals 0 0.25 and t equals 0 0.50 seconds I get a lot more it's not as big and we calculated it. it's 1.23 meters all the way down here position wise and about 0.92 meters uh, delta y between this time and this time. So in any event, um, if it's accelerating, equal amounts of time do not give you equal distances. They do give you equal delta P in the Y direction. There is no net force in the, y, in the horizontal direction. Why is that? Because there's no such thing as horizontal gravity. All right, so... Delta P subscript X, that's zero. And that is the same for every time increment as well. It just doesn't, it doesn't change. It doesn't give you any new momentum. Vertically, you get more momentum as you go down. But sideways, you don't get any new momentum. All right, now this is, gonna, is actually important for us when we start to talk about energy. And we're going to do that probably on Tuesday. But for right now, I want to point out that the force that causes the acceleration is the force of gravity from planet Earth. So in this formula down here, um, this is my gravitational formula law. Uh, capital M, and then the subscript is a circle with a plus sign in the middle of it. That's the astronomical symbol for Earth. So astronomers, when they, when they don't want to make a subscript E or a subscript with the full word Earth, but they need a subscript to denote Earth, this is what they use. Okay, And uh, the sun, if they were talking about the mass of the sun, the sun's uh, subscript is a circle with a little dot in the middle of it. And then Mars, I think Mars is a circle, is like the male symbol, a circle with an arrow. And then Venus is like a circle with a little plus below it, the female symbol. And then uh, Mercury, I can't remember, Mercury is like a little devil, you know, with little horns on it. Uh, there's a bunch of differences. Anyways, this is the one for Earth. 
And here's the other mass, the mass of the basketball. And the square of the distance is roughly the radius of Earth. So um, now we're not going to calculate. Well, actually, we did calculate that. That, that weight force is, uh, what was it, 6.08 newtons. And if you, if you put all the numbers in here, the mass of the Earth, capital G, 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11. And then the, 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 the radius of Earth is about 6,371 kilometers. And then convert that to 66,371,000 meters and then square it and then do all that calc. You get 6.08. So we've already done that. Everything's good. But my point to you is that it is an external force. It is unbalanced. Okay, this basketball is in free fall. So, there's, so Dwight Howard's not holding it upward. That would be balanced forces. Or the referee, you know, holding the, belt, the ball upward. That would be balanced forces. You know, his upward push force supporting the ball versus... Earth pulling downward, but now we don't we don't have that. And my wonderful students, when you have an unbalanced force, you get acceleration. When you get acceleration, you get delta p. And in this case, a delta p of 1.52 kilogram meter per second for every quarter second of uh, free fall, as we figured out. Now the reason that I'm bringing this up that gravity is an external force is I want to talk about collisions and collisions are modeled differently because a collision the momentum description of a collision You have to keep track of external forces and internal forces. So, for instance, if you have two boxcars that collide like this, um, there's going to be an interaction force, but it's not an external force. It's part of the system of boxcars. It's kind of like the two skateboarders. You know, they were balanced, the external force of gravity downward was balanced by the, the rigidity force of the floor. But they pushed off on each other and interacted and moved away from each other. Same thing with a boxcar. So let's look at this boxcar situation here. All right? And we're going to model it by saying that there are no unbalanced external forces. Matter of fact, Gravity is downward. Each of these boxcars, they're pretty big. They're ginormous. And they have big weight forces. But the weight forces are balanced by the rigidity of the railroad track. You know, you got to make it out of steel. And you got to have uh, railroad ties. And you can't put it on something that's, you know, soft ground. You got to have good, solid ground for a railroad track. And if you do, everything will balance vertically. All right. Now, horizontally, when these two things uh, hook together, they're going to exert forces on each other. One of them is going to exert a leftward force, just like the skateboarder, and one of them is going to exert some rightward newtons. All right. So let's take a look at this. And what we've got is identical boxcars, and let's just say they're each 35,000 kilograms each. Now, that's 35 metric tons. They're big boxcars. All right, and let's say that this one here has an initial velocity of 4.4 meters per second. Now that's about maybe nine or ten miles per hour. So that's that's a fairly slow speed for a boxcar. You know, usually when they're on the on the way from city to city, they're going 60, 70, even even 100 miles an hour out west. And let's say that the velocity of this group over here is zero. So these guys are at rest. And boxcar number one over here is moving at 4.4 meters per second. All right? They lock together as boxcars are meant to do. And then they go off to the right with a new speed. 
You know, and let me ask you this question. They're going to go off with a new speed. Is it going to be greater than 4.4 meters per second or less than 4.4? Probably be less, all right? So let's, let's, let's work it out, all right? So here we go. First, you're moving. Go ahead and draw in a vector for the velocity of boxcar number one. All right. Now we're going to compute the momentum of that guy. All right. And we're going to compute the momentum of these three ones over here. Hey, actually, uh, what's the momentum of each of these three boxcars over here that are at rest? Zero. So this is th these are the easy ones over here. They're at rest. Momentum is zero. The only thing that doesn't have any momentum, Celine, is this guy over here. But we know its speed. We know its mass. We can get its momentum. Uh, definition of momentum, P equals MV. So let's operate that now. And here we go. So the initial momentum of everything is the momentum of number one. 35,000 kilograms times a rightward 4.4 meters per second, uh, plus three zeros. These are the easy ones, all right, because they're at rest. Now, there's no external forces, so the total momentum afterward has to be the same size as that. If you calculate this out, 35,000, you should be... Verifying me on this. Who verifies me on this? One hundred fifty-four thousand. Okay. Okay, we got some verification. Make sure you have your calculators out because we're going to be calculating away uh, like maniacs uh, here today. All right. Now, theoretically, that has to also be equal to the final momentum. But the final momentum is one string of four identical boxcars. All of them moving off together at some new final speed. All right? And that's what we want to figure out. So the, in, the initial is 154,000 kilogram meters per second. The final has got to be 154,000 kilogram meters per second. And then by definition of momentum, it's equal to the sum of four boxcar masses, so 35,000 times four is 140,000, and then times the new velocity out here, V subscript nu, all right? And that's by definition of momentum, P equals MV. So over here, the fact that we don't have external forces means I know the size of the left side. The definition tells me what the right side is, by definition. And so now I can solve for V nu. Look at that carefully. I've got everything I need except for V nu, so I can solve uh, by dividing both sides. Question? We can make it for 140,000. That's four boxcars. They're each 35,000. See at the top in green and yellow? Up top left, the mass. And so that's, that's one, 35,000. Four of them, 140,000. All right. All right, so here's my, here's my final momentum. It's got to be 154,000 kilogram meters per second. And that's got to be, by definition, the mass of four boxcars linked together, moving at this speed. So I divide both sides by 140,000 kilograms, and I can figure out my new speed. And so go ahead and do that on your calculator. 154,000 divided by 140,000. And hey, you guys, that's going to be one point something 
because the numerator is just a little bit bigger than the denominator. So, in other words, I'm not going to get 50. I'm not going to get 5. I'm going to get 1 point something. Who's got an answer? Uh, what do you got? Uno point uno meters per second. Question. So now we know what V nu is. Questions? Celine. VG stands for the, the velocity of this group of three. G for group. And it's zero because they're at rest. And if you ever watch the switch yard um, for, a, you know, for uh, Norfolk Southern or Chessy or any, other, uh, any of the other systems, uh, you'll see this a lot, a, a string of box cars at rest, and then they'll, they'll build the string up by slamming another box car in to the very back. And they'll get those guys strung together, and then they'll do it again with another box car. And eventually, you know, they'll have 100 box cars uh, strung together. This is the, called the concept of conservation of momentum. Um, and it means that the momentum afterwards is equal to the momentum beforehand. Skateboarders give another one, another example of that. Here's the actual principle. The total momentum of a group of objects that interact remains the same in the absence of external forces. And really that should be in the absence of unbalanced external forces. Because those boxcars are subject to external forces in the vertical axis, but they balance. All right. Now, I'm going to ask you one last clicker question here concerning conservation of momentum. But let me pause for questions before we do that. Okay, let's keep going. One more set of box cars. All right. Here we go. Here are your specs. Same kind of interaction, but this time box car one is a little bit faster. Uh, and students, you better hit your refresh key. I forgot to put that in. Hit refresh. And give me V new. Oh, excuse me. Uh, give me. Yeah, this, it should be. Th this, actually, this is confusing. I want a. I want a momentum. You figure out the total momentum. Figure out the total momentum of the system before interaction. Yeah. It's going to be a big number. Yeah. And I'll just tell you, it's going to be a, whole, a big whole number. Just give me a whole number. One minute.
30 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Good, we got a bunch of answers. And let's see what. Um, raise your hand if you typed in 224,000. Sweet. Um, that's the answer. Homework 9 will be ready by lunchtime for you tomorrow, if not sooner. You're dismissed. Good class.